Hello everybody, I'm Nick. In this video I'm going to take a look at how null checking in C-sharp has changed over the years because it's an interesting topic that, you know, we started with something we thought was the norm and it's no longer the norm and something else is the norm. And I want to see what changed and how it changed. I just find it fascinating. So if you think it's interesting, stick around with me. We won't really touch into the null reference types feature of C-sharp 8 if that's your uh, concern or if that's what you're going to get out of this video. This is more about good old regular null checking so if you find that interesting just stick around and let's take a look at the code so what i have here is four projects and the first one starts with c sub 6 which is the last version before bigger changes started happening and what i have here let me quickly show you is i have a simple class that i call my special class which only accepts a name uh for an argument and it converts it into a property so that's it and then i have this program.cs to start and basically this has some chance to initialize either this class or set it to null and why do i start from version 6 well in version 6 life is pretty simple all you need to do to check whether that is null or not is value is null and then do a console dot i don't know right line value was null and if value is not null which is how you're doing the opposite uh, then you say value was and then string interpolate the version and by the way these projects are all limited to the version i'm talking about so if it was a feature of a different uh, language it would throw an error so that's simple enough and i can just run this real quick and show you that yeah the the value was oh, i should actually get the the name so very straightforward there's nothing else really you can do here to spice this up the other two things that we have is that you can do for example that if value dot name equals null and you can use the comma which is the null propagation i think uh operator which means that it will check whether value is null and also whether name is null will propagate the null and this is just another feature of this version and you also have the null coalescing operator which is like uh, var test equals let me move this up equals value that that and then you can say new nick and what this will do is check whether the value is null in line and if it is null give you a new version to assign but fundamentally these are the two ways you can do a null check in in c sharp 6 and before that and it worked great for us but then c sharp 7 came uh, into the game and it spiced things up a bit with pattern matching so now null check like i said used to be this console uh right line value was null but you could also do this value is null and this is the pattern matching feature that was introduced in c sharp 7 and it turned out that this and for the years to come for the next versions this was a safer version to do a null check and a better version if what you wanted to do is to make sure that the reference of this value is null that this is null basically and why is that well i'll show you why i'm going to delete those and i'm going to to debug obviously the opposite of this at this point is is this so you have to wrap this into brackets and say is not is null so it is not null uh, there's no other way you can invert that but there is also another way you can do a is not null check you could say if ah come on oh my fingers if value is object and this is basically a, a value is not null um pattern matching based check and obviously this is not readable at all but it will do the same thing it will ensure that the value you're checking is not null now the reason why i'm saying that is null is safer than equals is that I could very much go into this and override the operators 
So the equals operator and the is not operator can be overridden. The is operator cannot. It will always be unaffected and it will always check whether the actual reference is null or not. And I can prove it by sticking a breakpoint here and debugging. Now I have configured this class, as you can see, to always say that equals something is true. So even if this is not null, which in this scenario it is not, the is null check will fall through. And as you can see, I went inside. Uh, let me prove that again with a console write line because it might not be clear. This was null. And if I run this again, uh, it's, it's such a, an interesting one. So as you can see now, this was actually null. So if I rerun it, hopefully, uh, yeah. So this is not null. The value is test, as you can see. And if I step in this, it goes into as if the value was null. But if all I'm doing is a null check, this is wrong. Obviously, you have to be insane to override the equals operator like this anyway. But you could have some more complicated logic here, which could cause this being a legitimate bug. So is value, as you can see, will step over because it wasn't null, it just skipped. If it was, it would go in here. And again, is not null will fall in here because the value is not null. And then is object, which is the is not null, will also go inside. So these are the, the new ways. And I, I would argue that this is not really readable because you can miss the exclamation mark. And then this isn't really readable as well because like, what are you checking? Are you checking whether it's object? It's not clear to me that you're doing a null check here. So the positive version makes sense, but the negative version doesn't really make sense. But it should be clear that the difference is one is, is dangerous-ish because you can override the operator while the other one is not because you only check in the reference. The other thing is that if I use the IL viewer that um, Rider supports, you can see here, let me just make this a bit uh, bigger. You can see that is null uh, on the checking operator. We use the um, sec opcode. Now you don't really need exactly to know what it is. All you need to know is that this is comparing two values. Uh, but the equals, since we're overriding the operator, will call the op equality method, the operator for equality method. And this is a bit more taxing uh, performance wise because it will need to actually call a method behind the scenes while is will just do a straight check on the stack for the two values. So it's interesting that it's not just the dangerous nature of the equality operator. It's also that there's a performance improvement as well. And I just thought that is an interesting point to touch upon. Of course, if you weren't overriding the operator, and actually let me just show that because I think there is value in showing this. If I delete this and I rebuild it so the opcode uh, gets updated, you can see that both is null and equals null will use the sec opcode. So the call opcode will be used only when you're actually uh, overriding the equality operator. But with that out of the way, I think it's clear to understand what is the difference between the two. Now, this version also had a few other ways to do null checks. For example, you could do underscore equals value null collation operator, and let's say throw new argument null exception name of value and this will basically throw whenever a uh, value is null it it's essentially a shorthand version of if value is null then throw new argument exception it's very much the same thing but it's doing it by disposing the property that you assign to or the value you assign to so it's definitely less readable, but more compact. Uh, I usually, in scenarios like this, I usually go the long way because I think it's more readable to use it. But this would also work fine uh, if you all you want to do is this type of check. And with that out of the way, actually, let me move this at the bottom because you might want to use this code uh, for testing locally. And with that out of the way, you can go to version 
8 and version 8 is a bit more spicy it basically carries over all the seven features but it does add a couple of things because microsoft said okay value is object is not readable if you want to do it is not null check so how can we make this better and what they did is they said you want type object you will put these curly braces this is not a joke i'm serious they actually did that this is the same as saying basically object uh, and it is a is not null check uh, right line console dot right line actually what am i doing console right line um, value was not null value is and i'm gonna put the name name so this will only print if the value is not null so we have a 50 percent chance of this actually not working so okay so value was not null uh, value is test and the only way you can do this is if this actually had a value and if i run it again it probably uh won't put anything yeah because now it was null so this is a way in c sharp 8 to say value is not null and this is the like equivalent safe way of saying if value is null so it's the opposite essentially um interesting but not readable at all um so i wouldn't recommend using it because it's very hard to actually understand unless everybody's aligned to know what this is doing now another feature that was added in c sharp 8 was the null coalescing assignment operator which is basically the null coalescing with an equals and what this does is it checks that a hey, if value is null then assign it to whatever so this is now nick and if i debug through this you will see that uh, is this null no this is actually has a value so good so value equals test for this version and if i skip over this line nothing happened it's still test but if i run this again and hopefully this will be null this time uh i was unlucky i have to run it again i'm gonna cut this later now it is null so now that it is null i am able to use the null coalescing assignment to set the value not really a direct null check but it's a null check and an assignment if you want to make your code more compact but the big thing really was this um, you could do a not null check in the safe pattern matching way of checking for nulls uh, without having to use is object which didn't really fix any problems and c sharp devs actually heard us about that and in c sharp 9 the de facto like quote unquote proper way of doing null checks if you want to check that the reference is null and not want to involve any operators in the mix is to say if value is null and if value is not null these are the two ways that you want to be doing null checks now i know this is a departure from what we've been used to but in terms of what the IL is being translated to and in terms of the safety and readability um, I think this is actually a huge improvement and I'm a big advocate for uh, using this feature so that's it for this video a smaller video just talking about how null has changed and how null how modern null is looking like modern null checking I think that the C sharp team has done a great job moving towards a, a safer null and I'm a big advocate for it as well. So good job, Microsoft. That's all I have for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.